All right, just planning the patch out. So we got our conduit ran, we got most of the stuff done. Um, temporarily put the switch in and the router. Um, then we're gonna have a power panel here. Don't know what to do with the DSL or the U-verse modem yet. It might go in here. I might put up a shelf or something and hit it sideways or strap it to the, I don't know yet. I don't know, I gotta figure it out. But anyway, um, it's about beautification, right? Gotta make it look good. So once again, I'm gonna do my double stack, which does waste a patch panel, right? Top and bottom, you can split the switch ports up. It looks very clean and tidy like that. I love it, that's my favorite way to do it. Probably the only way I'll do it, but it does waste a patch panel, but they're like 12 bucks, so it doesn't really matter. It's just cleaner, unless you can't fit, then you're in trouble, but at any rate, so just moving them down, we've only got six data runs total, three VoIP, and then we're gonna have a WAN, which I will punch in too. So I gotta calculate that. Um, I'm gonna punch in the WAN, but I'll punch it down here. And that way there could just be a nice little tidy cable, you know, and then we're gonna have to patch into the switch. So planning it out, we'll probably go, and this is gonna sound corny and funny and nerdy, but I use like paint or paint 3D or whatever it's called. And I literally take a picture of this and then like at night at home, I make a patch cord size paintbrush and I draw in my things and see which looks the best and what's doable and what fits and whatnot. So I have no idea why I do that. I just like doing it like that. Works good for me anyway. And I pull them through here, which is lets me visualize and see and keep things straight. And I don't have to label because I'll be cutting them off, you know, and so, I mean, I don't want to say I won't have to label, but like the wiring, like on a big job where you got multiple pulls with, you have to label the wires anyway, but when it's a tiny job like this, I can just use my, my numbering scheme. I've already got as far as the, uh, the off or the, uh, the way it's laid out. Like I know, like, you know, this is the front counter one, the double front counter, the office, AP one inside, AP two, which is the conduit, which is this guy. So in this tiny job like this, it's really easy. You don't really need to do that. Um, the, the one mistake that I, <laughs> you just gotta be careful is you get them all like this, you get them where, where you want them. This isn't gonna be here, but just, you know, you get them where you want them and then you figure your length and your service loop and back. I usually curl down and kind of route it and do a nice service loop. I don't want it hanging down, but I just want a nice size loop. And then I vary my size and I plan that way, right? And sometimes you forget and you're like, okay, my length is say here. And then you cut, you put the jack on or the keystone on and then you're like, oh, oh no, it has to go in from the back. So when I do them one at a time, if I'm doing this one, you gotta pull it out and do that. Otherwise the jack's on the wrong side and I don't know. Hopefully I'm not the only one that's done that. Otherwise I'd feel dumb. So VoIP one, two, three, these match up with the office. So I know where these go. So we'll go, let's see here, VoIP. The third one is gonna go, let me look at my, my paint diagram. I'll show you what I, what I mean, what I did. Let me see if this is still recording. Oh, it is, okay. So I did, see my little paint, <laughs> corny I know, but it works really good. So we're gonna match up bottom of the switch with three, probably 15, 16, 17, and skip a couple and match three to keep them straight. So uh, where are we at here? 15, 16, 17 look like the best. So we'll go here. probably take the switch out now but I probably should oh. come on you can do it 15 
17. <clears throat> this is a really little install over here. But that's okay, these are kind of the fun ones. Got to mess with some more conduit. My favorite thing lately. All right, so. These are kind of messy in back, but we'll figure out. We're not gonna cable comb these or anything. It's, that's usually by the by the job. We could, but let's see. We can do it backwards going up, switch some stuff around, but at any rate, okay, so we're gonna patch, 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 patch to here. So these will go to here, these will go to here, a couple blanks. Airflow and cool, uh, temperature is fine in here, so we're gonna pop in the blanks so we don't need the, that extra airflow so it'll look cleaner, look better. Label, um, and then we'll probably skip two and we'll go 20, 21, and 22. Or no, I'm sorry, 20 and skip the rest. And then these guys have to go in the switch. So the way we're doing it, um, the Edge Router ER4 is really perfect for these little office setups with um, basic, basic needs, right? I mean, it's actually a decent router. It's a, it's a really good router as far as power and everything, but you got console port, you got WAN, even though it's ER4, they count the console, uh, console port. So you've got really three. So you've got ETH0 is always WAN, ETH1 is LAN, and we tag on a virtual interface which would be VLAN 20 for guest Wi-Fi. If they need LAN Wi-Fi, it works off that. Obviously, we set it up. Then we set up guest Wi-Fi, put a firewall rule in to keep it off the main network and all that good, good stuff, of course. And ETH2, um, we, we, we use as VoIP. Um, so in the switch, it'll treat it as a VLAN, but it's a total different network. This uh, uh, Edge Router 4 and Edge Router 6 unlike the ERX, they don't have a switch chip in them. These aren't switched, you know how like a normal router, or I shouldn't say a normal router, but a, uh, like most routers, you have your, your WAN port and then you have four ports and the ports are switched ports. In other words, you could plug them in there. Uh, ERX has a switch chip in it um, and the ERX SFP and a few other models where you set it up as like switch zero and then you you vlan off that this doesn't have any switch at all you can bridge them but you're gonna take a big performance hit so this is a true router these are all routed separate ports with separate networks but they can have virtual interfaces and have vlans on that one port okay so once again wan lan and also vlan 20 guest wi-fi and a whole separate routed network voip and it'll tie into the switch. All the VoIP things will make a little, it's not a trunk and unify, but kind of, and then it'll, it'll tie into here. Those will be on that network. Um, and then uh, that'll handle the, the, the VLAN and the regular LAN for, or the native LAN, whatever, for uh, the access point. So that sounds confusing. I just confused myself, but you know what I mean. So yeah, so it's a good little setup. I love ER4s. They're almost made for this type of thing where you got like a 20 or less user and it's it's just, it's all right there. It's all clean. We have these set up as a template. Man, we can bang these out so quick, make minor modifications and it's just pretty much done, you know? So that's it. We'll start cutting and putting the keystones in now that we got our layout. So once again, we've got these line up. They get little short patch cables, six inches is going to be 15. So 15 is going to go to one. So 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then these three voice are going to go two, four, six. That'll be clean. And uh, 20 is going to go to WAN, which will punch in whatever U versus dishing out for the Ethernet. We'll patch into here. And then these two will go in 14 and 16 as kind of like the trunks. That's LAN and that's VoIP trunk. So, sounds like a plan.